Right now, we are in one of the most famous villages in all of the United States of America. It is a very famous tale. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Sleepy Hollow, north of New York City, accessible via the Metro North to Phillipsburg Manor nearby. And it is worth coming here for all the Halloween vibes. It's going to be very full right now because we are at the Sleepy Hollow Cemetery, which is very famous because it is the main area where the events famous story takes place. In movies like the Tim Burton one, Sleepy Hollow, this horseman tethers his horse nightly among the graves in the churchyard according to the legend of Sleepy Hollow, author Washington Irving. Look at that. So beautiful leaves here today. There's going to be. I'm Ariel. This is Urbanist. Let me know where you're watching from. And let's explore Sleepy Hollow. So I'm so happy to be exploring this. I explored this two years ago. Uh, if you want to learn the full history of Sleepy Hollow, you can go and click the link in the description down below. It's my video from two years ago. Or you can search Urbanist Sleepy Hollow and you will find it. Today, we're just going to more wander around, enjoy the scenery because when I came here two years ago, around the same time of year, the leaves were all green. It still looked fairly summery, but today it is just gorgeously autumnal today. So we're going to enjoy more of the scenery, kind of wander around, take our sweet time. Uh, so check out that previous video for more of the in-depth history. Now let's wander around Sleepy Hollow. So welcome, welcome everyone. Shout out to Kay who, Kay is going through a little bit of a tough time health-wise. Round of hearts to Kay. May you feel better, Kay. Um, thank you so much for always tuning in, being an amazing moderator and mega urbanist and all the things. And here we have another sign. Welcome to the burying ground at the old Dutch church of Sleepy Hollow. The burying ground is private property. To maintain the sacred character of this space, there's a few restrictions in force. Rubbings, impressions, or any tampering with gravestones and monuments is strictly prohibited and punishable by law. No weapons of any kind permitted. Ah, damn. Ah, never mind. Gotta hide the wooden stake. All right. Dogs must be leashed and cleaned up afterwards. Okay, they don't mention anything about horses. All right, so got my horse around the corner. <laughs> and here we have uh, some Dutch clogs. There's a ghostly figure in the window. Oh, that's just me. All right, never mind. Uh, here's some Dutch clogs, wooden shoes. So the reason there are Dutch clogs here is because this was an area settled by the Dutch, the people from the Netherlands. Of course, the most famous settlement is New Amsterdam, but the Dutch extended beyond up the Hudson River Valley, throughout Long Island as well, and parts of New Jersey. The Dutch basically maintained a lot of their culture here post-American Revolution. So when Washington Irving came here for the first time, he was stunned at how strange this place felt, especially coming here to the old Dutch church constructed in 1699. Yep, this is a building from the 1600s. He was stunned to see people here still holding very strange superstitions 
and also speaking English but in a very thick Dutch accent. So it was a little bit hard to understand the locals. They were also very closed off. Of course, since America was changing by the time of Washington Irving, who was already alive by the late 1700s, early 1800s, uh, the Dutch were, at least these small villages, felt disconnected from the new culture that was developing in New York City nearby, or New Jersey nearby, or many other parts of the US. So you can just imagine how insular this must have felt back in the late 1700s. So here is an old Dutch church from 1699. That's so cool. Can you see the Dutch style roof that we saw on the Netherlands? But the Netherlands didn't have too much um, stone. Oh, today we can see it clearly inside. That's all awesome. George says, who's standing behind you? Maybe it's the headless Hessian. We'll learn about him in a little bit. Oh, that's so cool. I'm trying to get the best view right here. I wish this was open. Every time I come here, it's closed. Eighteen twenty one, these headstones, eighteen thirty three. Wonder if the interior is also from sixteen ninety nine. So obviously it has been repaired and refurnished, but yep, it pretty much looks like what it would look like in the sixteen hundreds. Or sixteen ninety nine, so already seventeen hundreds. Nicole says, Did you come back by train? Great question, Nicole. My original intention was to come here by train, but I ended up getting a ride uh, from uh, my dad, the executive producer. So he's out here exploring on his own uh, with my mom and uh, decided to come with them here again because it's a lovely time of year to spend with some family. Uh, but yes, train is accessible from Grand Central Station. Hello, George. Hello, Wendy, Jordan, Ron, Colleen, Nicole. We got so many people tuning in. Let me know if you're tuning in. Jordan, who's a formerly an ominous dude. Nice to see you here, Jordan. Hello, Adriana, uh, Mika. We got so many people tuning in. Welcome. Kimberly says, I love these adventures. I'm so glad, Kimberly. Thank you so much for tuning in. Again, two years ago, I made a video. I went deep, deep into the history of this all. So you can check that out after this video. Today, we're just wandering around. So feel free to ask me any questions. I'll tell you a little bit more of a briefer version of the history as we get to a few of the graves. Who's this guy? Oh, my God. James Br is buried here. Oh wait, never mind. Wrong James Brown. <laughs> 1857. Hey, nice to see you here. Keith, welcome. Bella, nice to see you here. And here we're seeing some Dutch names. Reverend Gulik van Aken, born 1840. There's a message here, though I can't read it. Lorinda says, so nice to have this video playing while I'm at work. Hey, Christy says, I was planning on being in Sleepy Hollow last week, but I had to cancel the trip. 
Glad to see you exploring it. Oh, I'm so sorry you had to cancel the trip, Chrissy. I think you and your mom will have loved coming here. It's awesome. Uh, I think it's definitely well worth the journey if you are visiting New York or you're in the local area. Any tree experts, let me know. There's a lot of fungus on these leaves. Wow. Seems like there's a, some type of fungal disease. So this is a private cemetery, but it wasn't always called Sleepy Hollow. Maybe that was the name back in Washington Irving's time, but for a good portion of its history, it was called North Terrytown. Because this was part of an industrial area of New York City. However, back in 1996, in order to stop the confusion between Terrytown, which is nearby, also another great Main Street area, and with this area, which was a more of a suburb of Terrytown, they decided to go back to the name Sleepy Hollow. And hence, this is a Sleepy Hollow Cemetery. Jordan says it's beautiful. Here we have another Dutch name, Van Wart. Susie says, Ariel, I wish you would make a short horror film. <laughs> you know, I don't watch horror. I used to as a little kid, but I haven't watched a horror movie in I think nearly eight years or more. But it is certainly fun filming something horror style. Oh, what is this? No way in. No. Oh, oh. 
I just saw something. Wait, what? What's happening here? Hello? Is anyone in there? Hello? Is anyone in there? All right, so just some random uh, grunting. <laughs> we have to ignore that. <laughs> hey, Jordan, nice to see you here. Isabel says you're, you're too much. Oleg says, is, is the ghost hungover? I think, I think the ghost might be hungover indeed, yeah. yeah. It died drunk, and hence it's eternally hungover. Where are the dates on some of the headstones? Let's see, we're seeing a lot of 1800s. And we found a Freemason, look at this. Ladies and gentlemen, we found our first Freemason, George A. J. George W. Arnold, 1847 as well. 1910 he died. And Cyrus M. Arnold, maybe they were brothers? 1943. We got Macintosh, 1950s. This is a strange one. It's like a, a cylinder on top of a, a stone. That's so interesting. So there's a lot of these smaller gravestones as well. One of these smaller gravestones is believed to be a Hessian soldier. If you don't know what Hessians are, they were basically soldiers from an area in modern day Germany um, where they were hired by the British military in order to fight the Revolutionary War on their behalf. The Hessians fought at a battle nearby against the Americans, the rebels, as so they were called by the Brits at that time, nearby at the Battle of White Plains. There, it was said that a Hessian soldier, while at the front lines, lost his head due to a cannonball. And the shot was so perfect that his head fell off clean, his body nearly intact. This Hessian soldier was buried, apparently, here, in this cemetery, one of those smaller gravestones. It's the unknown grave. According to legend, and this was known by the time Washington Irving came here, this headless Hessian 
would come and terrorize people in this cemetery in the nearby town. Especially if you were a newcomer and not from here, looking for his head. What is this? Is that a water pipe? It is said that on Halloween, this pipe does not exert water, but it runs red. Blood flows. No, I'm joking. I just made that up. But <laughs> I'm not sure why there's a random water pipe here. And there's a seems to be tying a horse maybe i'm not sure maybe this is not a water pipe maybe this is part of the gates yeah maybe this was gated yeah oh the spirits are taking over the gimbal nicole says interesting the headless horseman is german yeah yeah he is uh nicole let us know what is um the hessian area is hessia let us know what's the modern day name of that area of Germany. But yes, the Headless Horseman indeed is German, looking for his head. He was depicted by Christopher Walken in the Tim Burton movie. Unis says, I'm in your neighborhood. Oh, so cool. I'm so glad I can show you. Uh, Bella says, my tombstone is further down. <laughs> and Bella says, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Though I'll be very concerned if you were uh, viewing this live stream from the dead. That is not a train because a Metro North train hasn't passed through here in decades. But every Halloween season, people still hear a train passing by and they have no idea where it comes from. Shrieking through the town looking for a place to disembark, but never finds one. Okay, I'm joking around that. That is a real train. <laughs> I'm just making that up. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, this is why I love about Washington Irving. Washington Irving wasn't dragged down by telling real history. Obviously because A, he's, he, he was a writer, he was a fiction writer, but he used history as a way to tell very fun stories. Some that were creepy, some that were fun, some that teach you a great lesson, but nonetheless they were fun. And uh, I think in the spirit of Washington Irving it's nice to make up some stories on a whim. Jordan says the scenery behind you is so gorgeous. Yes, let's 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 admire it. Susie says it's the ghost of Amtrak. Yes. Kay says, would you visit there at nighttime? I would love to, actually. Keith says, gotta love October. Oh, yes. Tracy says, it could have been, uh, water pipe could have been for the flowers. Maybe, yeah, thank you so much, Tracy, for uh, letting us know. Trisha, nice to see you here. Tr uh, Keith, we have a lot of people tuning in. If you're tuning in for the first time or you don't say hi often, do let us know. Always happy to say hi. We have a few more graves. Samuel Ames died 1858, age 53 years old. And it says underneath his gravestone, Jesus wept. And Sarah Ames, widow of Alfred P. Arnold. Mighty Horse, thank you so much for the $5 super chat. You should do an Instagram photo shoot, great destination and coat. <laughs> hey, thank you so much for the compliment, Jordan. Um, Patricia says, hello from the Netherlands, Patricia. Hey, Patricia. 
We're in the area that used to be part of New Netherlands, right over here. Oh, Maria Jane, look at that. In these graves, you know, in these graves, every time I visit a cemetery, I'm always bummed. I don't see my own name. Why is there never an Ariel buried anywhere here? Like, it's not like it's a rare name. Uh, Nicole says, Hesse Castle is in the middle of Germany and was a state of the Holy Roman Air Empire. Oh, cool, Nicole. Thank you so much for letting us know. So, everyone, this is a very important announcement right over here. I appreciate everyone tuning in. And I know a lot of you are traveling, especially now for the holiday season. So I partnered up with a company called Wander, Just Wander. And they are providing super heavily discounted hotels all around the world. Uh, if you use my direct link over here, book.justwander, without the vowels, uh, .com slash at Ariel Vieira. So right there is the link. And all the, a portion of the bookings actually goes to support the show here urbanist so a if you want super heavily discounted prices this is not like bookings.com these prices only usually are available to corporations that book in mass uh, for events and things like that uh, and you want to support the show click on that link book.justwander.com slash at ariel vera Wow. So let's go find Washington Irving's grave, which is in this general vicinity. Oh, right here. Alexander says, I took a night tour. Oh, that's so cool. Sleepy Hollow. Only by lanterns. It was cool and creepy. That's awesome. I'm glad you enjoyed that. So here we have the Washington Irving grave plot. Let's see what's the Irving family grave plot. Washington Irving's grave, uh, nearby Irving's home, Sunnyside, and the old Dutch church of Sleepy Hollow, which Irving immortalized in legend, are now national historic landmarks. Irving's grave plot receives perpetual care from the local citizens and admirers of the author of Sleepy Hollow Legends. This plaque was donated in 1972. And right down there, we see the plaque of the man, the legend, one of the greatest storytellers of American history, Washington Irving himself. April 3rd, 1738, he was born and died November 28th, 1859. It's good that this is now a National Historic Landmark. He was a great writer. He did not only write Sleepy Hollow, he's also known for Rip Van Winkle, which was written nearby as well in the Catskill Mountains. It's about a man who fell asleep, woke up, Many decades later in his old age, the world has changed around him. And then uh, he also wrote what every, basically everything we assume about Christopher Columbus, he's the one who wrote it. He wrote the fictional biography of Christopher Columbus. I am, yeah, yeah. Oh, thank you so much, yeah. Appreciate it.
So yeah, oh, shout out to the guy who uh, saw me from uh, TikTok. Um, Washington Irving wrote a semi-fictional account of Christopher Columbus. So basically everything we know about Christopher Columbus and that is taught sometimes literally in school, I'm not sure why they don't make that this, this distinction, uh, is actually Washington Irving's legend of Christopher Columbus, such as the world, um, him holding a, like an orange or a fruit and uh, saying that the world is actually round, it's a sphere, uh, while everyone thought it was flat. That's more Washington Irving than reality. Let's uh, see if we can pop up an image of Washington Irving right here. And if you ever go to Gramercy Park, you'll notice that there is a place called Irving Plaza. It's named after him because he lived in that area of modern day Gramercy Park in New York City. His work has been adapted into many different forms, classic comics, Rip Van Winkle and the Headless Horseman over here. And this is where he lived his final days, nearby in the mansion called Sunnyside. So if you're visiting here and you have a car, uh, you can do both in the same day. If you don't have a car, it gets very tricky. But if you have a car, you can do both. Pro tip, book tickets ahead of time. Because this, there's a nearby mansion, uh, if I'm correct, of Rockefeller, I think. And there's a manor over here, which I want to show you, but it is sold out. So do book these uh, places in advance. And here's Ichabod Crane running away from the Headless Horseman. All right, let's check out the bridge of Ichabod and uh, the sign as well. Pat says, I was at Sunnyside at his um, house. Oh, that's so cool. Ooh, but first, mausoleums. Hey, Mar uh, Marina, nice to see you here. Eunice, nice to see you here too. This is one picturesque mausoleum by someone named Cobb. Hey, Daniel says, I wonder what's happening with Nightbot and the weather. Yeah, unfortunately, Nightbot, is, something happened because it was working normally, but now it sees New York City as an invalid location. I'm not sure why. So right here we have the Mario Cuomo Bridge, formerly known as the Tappan Zee. It is one of the more recently built bridges in the New York City metropolitan area. Jordan says, I should be a little bit scared, but it's also beautiful. That would be scary looking in black and white, says Susie. 
it would be scary looking in black and white. I think you are hit the nail on the head, Susie. You hit the nail on the head. Let's go back in time to a world before color. A world of only contrast, of light and shadow. Wow. Aurum says, I love this channel. I'm so glad you do, Aurum. Hey, Linda says, hello, late as usual. No worries, Linda. Thank you so much for tuning in. Marina says, everything looks dead in black and white. Yeah, the trees have different shades. They do. And you can tell uh, what the shades are in black and white as well. Irwin says, imagine someone tapping your shoulder out of nowhere. Oh, that would be freaky. My shoulder gets tapped and someone right behind you, behind me says, the TikTok guy, right? <laughs> that would be a very, very disturbing series of events. All right, let's go. <laughs> go back to normal. Mauricio says, is this live now? No, Mauricio, it isn't live. This was filmed many, many years ago, but through the highly developed power of foresight that I've been training for years, I knew you were going to tune in, Mauricio. Thank you. Jordan says, you should really make a movie one day. <laughs> That's my intention. 
Narendrantha. Narendranatha. Ooh, hard name to pronounce, but thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate you. Sorry, was the just wander link again, says Helen. Right, exclamation point hotels, plural. Exclamation point hotels, the link will pop up. All right, let's go see the outside of the cemetery, the figure of the headless horseman, and the bridge as well. Okay, it does not work on Facebook, unfortunately, so only the link is viewable on YouTube and Twitch. No, just, just YouTube, never mind. Omeo says, I wish I could see a ghost. It'll give me some comfort that afterlife exists. Oh, Omeo. <laughs> wow. Beautiful little ravine. So this is the main um, ravine that is featured in the original Washington Irving story. This is the one that Ichabod Crane, the school teacher, who comes from the city, runs across in haste. And the bridge he runs across is this one, though there is a more fictional bridge down that way to make it look a little bit more authentic. Jane says, this is my first comment, but just wanted to let you know I've been following you for a year, and I love your work. Oh, James, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for saying hello. Heavenbound says, wow, so beautiful. Yeah, it's gorgeous to visit this time of year. And just in general, um, as I mentioned, it's a bit hard to get around just by train from spot to spot. So if you're visiting Sleepy Hollow, it's easy to just do Sleepy Hollow, uh, the few of the sites like Phillipsburg Manor right over here, and then Tarrytown, the main street, you can walk down and take the train right next to it. Uh, but if you want to hop around more in this area above New York City, you can go to, you can take a uh, car and go from spot to spot. Here's a lot of Sleepy Hollow merch. Manny, dice, excelente trabajo en, en ahora en Buenos Aires. Es bien caloroso hot in Buenos Aires. Oh, I'm so glad you're enjoying the work. What we'll state is Sleepy Hollow, Deb? We're in New York, New York State, 25 miles north of New York City. 
about an hour train ride away from Grand Central Terminal. Here's the Headless Horseman Bridge, described by Irving in The Legend of Sleepy Hollow, formerly spanned this stream at this very spot. So let's see, cross the bridge without encountering a headless Hessian that will throw a gigantic pumpkin at us, whisking us away into the spiritual realm. Or more the ghostly realm. Miguelito says, quite, it reminds me of my old hometown in San Jose. Oh, I'm so glad it does, Miguelito. So let me show you what uh, the scene would have been here across the bridge. So we would have had that passing through. And this would be the Hellas Horseman, the Hellas Hessian. And has been depicted in in stamps as well. Hey, Jamie says I love live in Astoria. Hey, Jamie, nice to see you here. Renee says it's a shame that there's no more English or Dutch accents. No, the Dutch accent. You know, I'm very curious if the Dutch accent survives somehow. My inclination is there has to be some remnant of the Dutch accent in northern New York. And if you ever listen to someone from upstate New York, there is a slight difference. There's a slight accent that's different from New York City. So here's a, a little headless horseman balloon. That's funny. We have a haunted gasoline station. It is said that this gasoline station brings shivers down the spines of any drivers that pass by because of the prices. It keeps rising and rising and rising with no end in sight. People come here with a very fat wallet and leave empty. But this also applies to every gasoline station across the United States of America. <laughs> Let me show you the, the side, we have, uh, the actual sculpture. We have a few people taking photos. So right here is Phillipsburg Manor, one of the largest manors from this area. The guy owned a huge swath of land all around. Pat says, this is scary for sure. Yes, indeed. Erwin says, I would check white a YouTube for Dutch accents. Hey, Action Kid, nice to see you here. Welcome. Nicole says, it's still cheap compared to Europe. Yes. Oh, really? Europe gasoline prices are high? That's interesting. So here's a sculpture of the Headless Horseman chasing down Ichabod Crane. And let me show you Phillipsburg Manor from the outside. Uh -oh. A haunted ambulance. Unfortunately. 
actually so hard to see. Okay. Renee asks uh, about any true crime here. As far as I know, no. There's no true crime stories here. That's more in C <laughs> That's more in the West Coast. Memo says everything's haunted. Yes. Here's the haunted sign. No parking on this side. 3 p.m. to 11 p.m. Otherwise, you'll encounter the dreaded undertaker. I mean, tow truck. All right, let me see if I can cross. Ooh. Here's another little stone sculpture in honor of the Headless Horseman. The suspense music is needed, says Oleg. Yes. Hey, Vaughn says, uh, you found me through Action Kid. Oh, I'm so glad you did. Thank you so much for... Oh. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, here we have another site you have to watch out for. The tour bus. Tour buses are very scary things because as you're walking around a beautiful site, like here, today, Phillipsburg Manor is going to be right in sight. We're going to see it soon. You got to watch out because you can get enraptured by hordes of tourists that have no idea where they're walking. So you're stuck for a few minutes, can't find any way out. You'll bump into tourists taking photos, taking selfies, whipping out maps, the guy trying to wrangle everyone. It is rather scary. And then the older the tour group, the slower it is that you'll be able to get out. So do be mindful of tour buses. Otherwise, you will be stuck in the purgatory that you can't get out of. So this is Phillipsburg Manor. Uh, to my surprise, this is sold out today. So do buy tickets ahead of time. I'll show it to you from afar. And the reason I think it's sold out is because there's a lot of these tour buses, which is surprising. I didn't think this was such a heavily touristed attraction. Oleg says, headless people are always the most aggressive. <laughs> Renee says, Ariel needs an app on his iPhone to make him talk like Orson Welles. <laughs> so Phillipsburg Manor really ran between 1693 and 1799. And it was a land taken originally by the, um, a Dutch family that lived here. However, Phillipsburg ended up owning a gigantic swath of this area that used to be New Netherlands. And yeah, a lot of these buildings were indeed built by uh, Africans who were brought over here against their will. Jordan says, thank you so much for the relief. It's been uh, great uh, to watch these live streams and relax. I'm so glad. Oh, look at this red tree. There in the distance, we have the ghost train passing through.
beautiful. All right, everyone, I hope you enjoyed this little saunter through beautiful Sleepy Hollow. Um, I think it's really well worth coming here. Uh, you'll have a good time enjoying the beautiful views of trees, leaves, graves, and maybe you'll spot the Headless Horseman yourself and be able to run away from him be before he whisks you away to an otherworldly realm. Thank you everyone so much for tuning in. Uh, I'll be back on Halloween night, first at 1 p.m. and then later at 6.30 p.m. for an actual look into the parade itself, uh, which is going to be a lot of fun. And then uh, tomorrow, I'm taking over the Instagram Live of Classic Harbor Line. Classic Harbor Line. Check them out. I'm going to pop up the name here. They are hiring me to do a takeover and they sponsor the last broadcast so it's an awesome way to grow the show so cl check out classic harbor line tomorrow on instagram i'll be live there at 1 p.m 1 p.m for about two hours and a half everyone thank you so much for tuning in from sleepy hollow there's a lot more here to see watch my history video link is in the description right below or search urbanist sleepy hollow for the in-depth in history of all this area Keep being awesome and always keep on exploring. Have a great day, everyone. <laughs>